Island. Did you catch some of those words? Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. May that be what we get to do together as we're gathered. Welcome to all of you gathered in person and those gathered online. We're so glad that we get to sing the wondrous love of Jesus with each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this day of worship. And friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come, let us worship. Let us pray. Almighty Creator, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of Jesus' presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by Jesus' risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us stand now and sing our opening hymn. It is Blessed Assurance. We'll sing verses 1 and 3 this morning. Please stand and join us as Abel. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
invite you now to watch our morning announcement video as opportunities to connect with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And I look forward to seeing you at so many of these opportunities. Good morning, Stone River. Here are your announcements. That was some folks from the Agape Sunday School class. Our April Mission Impact Partner is Umcor Warehouse. We are collecting disaster relief supplies in the reception area throughout the month. Look in the newsletter for the list of needed items and make sure to sign up in the lobby for an opportunity to volunteer together at the warehouse on Tuesday from 9 to 12. Our backpack food and security team will pack for 25 students on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Our care team will be collecting diapers and gift cards for Gabby and their family to welcome Ember Lynn to the church family this Wednesday during our fellowship meal. On Thursday, our United Women of Faith will gather for a meeting at the church at 11, and our men's ministry will meet for lunch at Canton House at 1130. The Dismantling Racism Team invites all of North Alabama United Methodist to join in holy conversations from 9 to noon this Saturday at Home Street United Methodist Church. Make sure to sign up online. Another opportunity on Saturday morning is to partner with J. Paul Hunger Relief at Solomon Temple anytime from 7 to 10 in the morning. Mark your calendars for the next Leadership Summit next Sunday at 2.30. Everyone is encouraged to come. And just a reminder, if your ministry team would like something in the newsletter or bulletin, emailing it to me by Tuesday would be super helpful. Thank you so much for all you do to serve and give back to the church. I hope you have a great morning. A lot of opportunities there to connect with your brothers and sisters. Um, and in our ministry highlight this morning, I'm, I'm especially thankful for all of you who are part of our Celebration of Life team. You know that today we will celebrate the wonderful life of our beloved Leon Smith uh, with visitation at 2 and the service to celebrate his life at 315 here. And then Tuesday we'll celebrate the life of Gary Woods at 2 o'clock here. And I am so thankful I'm reminded of how this church comes together in times of an earthly loss and celebrating a heavenly gain for those persons and those families who are grieving. And so for those who prepare the meal, who set up a space and clean up the space for a family just to come and sit and breathe and have a meal and to connect after celebrating a loved one's life, I'm so thankful for your ministry. If that's a ministry you'd like to be part of, see Rebecca or Ella Ferguson um, or Charlotte, there's plenty of ways to connect and to give an amazing gift to families uh, who are celebrating the life of a loved one. So thank you for all of you involved in that amazing ministry. I invite now our usher to come forward for the giving and the receiving of God's tithes and our offerings. Gracious God, we are thankful for this day, for the opportunity to worship and the opportunity to regularly, daily be used by you. And oh God, we raise now to you these tithes and these offerings. They are yours as are we. Use them in us for your glory in Christ's name. Amen.
as you remain standing. We'll now sing our hymn of worship, which is 162. Alleluia, alleluia. We'll sing verses 1 and 4 this morning. Our New Testament reading comes from 1 John 3, 1 through 6. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin, no one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him nor known him. This is the word of our Lord. A silent prayer and then our prayers for the people. Almighty God, you hold and you comfort. Today we are going to be reminded what great love you have for us. Today you're going to to remind us that you encourage us and you love us and you're for us. Today, you're also going to call us and remind us to come back. The times when we find it all too easy to 
to fall in, into a darkness, to fall into the way that would lead to destruction, to us viewing others as less than, to us viewing ourselves as less than. Today, you remind us that we're loved by you. God, may that love inspire us to live out everything we believe in you. May it inspire us to have hope in dreary situations. To see ourselves the way that you see us, not the way that this world sees us or the way that we might even see ourselves, but that we would glimpse at ourselves through your lens. Holy Spirit, hold us this morning. Speak deep into our hearts and into our minds. We honor you and we love you, Lord. Hold the chaos that is happening around our world Usher in your peace. We pray this in the power of your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind And love your neighbor as yourself Let us be known, let us be known By the way we love Let us be known, let us be known By the way So today as we start, there, there is a pause over our morning, over our day. Um, and it's a time that I think all of us, we, we, uh, we pause and we remember brilliant saints that go before us. Right, we, we think of loved ones, we think of Leon, we think of Gary, we think of all the innocence that's been lost um, throughout all the wars that are happening currently as we're, we're here today safely in, our, in this sanctuary. And we just pause for a moment. And in, in the midst of that, we prepare to, to look at an incredibly challenging text that John seems to lay out really beautifully for us. So my hope today would be that in this homily, I get a chance to articulate this incredible passage and passion of, of, of the intent of this text to move us, to move our hearts, to move our minds, to move us in our faith. So as we look at this, we're going to be looking at three, three pieces to this text. Right? This first element is that we see the great love of God makes all of us, all of us here, all of us that are worshiping online at home, anyone that has breath on this planet, a child of God. The second part we're going to be looking at is uh, this, this bondage of sin that, that weighs us down, that's, that's over us. What do we do with that? How do we handle that? How do we handle that separation And then the third thing is the way that we define the way that we love Jesus Christ, the way that we live that out. So we start in in this manner of of looking at at this beautiful passage. Um, 1 John 3, 1 has always been one of my favorite. Um, uh, I memorized it in the NIV. And in the NIV, it's, See what great love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called the children of God. You probably hear me use that a lot, because uh, it's, it's an impactful passage to me. 
that in the, in the way that we get a chance to see ourselves, we get a chance to see ourselves that we are, no matter how, how critical we are, no matter what mistakes we've done, no matter even if we don't understand the distance of relationships, we can still feel like we're to blame in the midst of all this. This morning we get to be reminded that you're enough, that you're loved, and that you are incredibly valuable in God's kingdom, that you are God's child. What a beautiful reminder, right? No, no, matter, uh, no matter where you are, no matter where you are on your journey with Jesus, this, this passage is calling out. There's a God that loves you so much. This is calling you God's child. That God's love is greater than any of our doubts. That God's love is greater than any of our, of our hurt that has happened. Any of our fears that paralyze us. That God's love is greater than that. God's love is greater than any of the, the harmful things that we've done or said. So this morning, as we, we walk through this, I'm asking you to silence that voice of condemnation that's in your mind. To, to ask the Holy Spirit to, to silence that, right? To silence the, that voice that, man, I could have done this better. I should have done that better. I should have reacted to this differently. To silence that. And allow the love of God to sing over you and engulf you in God's presence. This is the way that, that John is wanting this Christian community to live out their faith. That this is the starting block. This is, this is the, b- before you do anything, before you, you get up out of bed, remember this key factor that you are lavishly loved. The world is going to be violent and vile and wicked. People are going to have bad days and take it out on you. You're going to be treated unjustly and unfairly. You're going to be pushed. You're going to be, you're going to be treated uh, poorly. Don't repay that. Don't repay that. Live in this lavishly loved presence of God. In the midst of every attack, live in this presence. So who are you? Right? Who are you as God's child? Your beloved. And in verse 2, I could spend all, probably all week on verse 1, but we're moving on. <laughs> verse 2, we get to this thought that you haven't quite been revealed yet, but you're going to be. Every one of us, we're a work in progress. Every one of us have this ability to wake up and to showcase the fruits of the Spirit, to showcase the means of grace, to showcase who we are as a disciple every day. We have that opportunity. It hasn't quite been revealed. In John's text, he's talking about as well, I want you, when you get a chance to see Jesus, to demonstrate what that love looks like, what that presence looks like, what that life looks like. I want you when it's revealed to you, to live into that calling. Live into the calling for who you are. For how you are going to demonstrate this great love. How you're going to stand with Jesus, ushering in peace and goodness and belonging, ushering in forgiveness and reconciliation and compassion, ushering in justice. Right, this is who you are as a child of God. Then in verses 4 through 6, he says, but this is what you choose. Right, you know all this. I know all this. We all know this. But for some reason, we, we choose sin and darkness. Now, in this one small little letter, First uh, John, uh, sin is there seventeen times, and there it's not. It's not 
just the things that we do wrong. It's not just the things that we do wrong to others or to ourselves. It's not just the, the, the corporate sin that we fall into harming others in a systemic level. But there's three different ways that First John talks about sin. Uh, the first is that sin is a devastating break in the relationship with God. We know that. The second one, sin is something that God forgives through Jesus Christ. And then this third point is that sin, it's, it's, not, it's not just a personal, individual choices, but it's something that a whole community can make. So we look at this. I, I, I look at this in the way of um, when you're, you're watching, uh, maybe some of you do this when your sports teams are playing. Um, Jill and I do it sometimes when we're watching TV or a movie, and they're it's a, if it's a scary movie and they're about to go into the closet or the attic or the dark basement where there's scary sounds coming, like, don't go down there. <laughs> right? Do any of you else talk to the TV or talk to your coaches? Um, don't, don't go down. Don't choose to go down to the scary dark basement. Don't go into the scary dark closet or that scary attic. or that. Sc- don't do that. Wait till the morning, bring a friend, Turn a, get a flashlight, do anything but go down. But you and I choose darkness. I, I choose darkness. We're lavishly loved by the creator of the universe. And there are still times that we choose to destroy that we choose to put down, that we choose to overlook. We don't have to hurt other people, but we choose that. We don't have to be unkind or ungracious, judgmental, but we choose that. We don't have to look at other people in the light that we've grown up, but we choose that. First John saying, you're lavishly loved. You've not quite been re- revealed yet, but wait till you see Jesus. You're going to be like him in every way. But sin's going to gut you. It's going to make you appear that you don't even know the Savior of the world. That you're just going to keep choosing to walk into these dark paths. So it gets us to our, our final point of how are you going to choose to define the way that you live out Jesus' love? Are we going to continue just to choose the path that we're comfortable with? Or are we going to choose the path to fully acknowledge that we're walking in the full embrace of Jesus Christ? You've heard me say this many times. The only way for us to correct bad theology is to live out good theology. Right? We're not going to get in, into word debates. But for all of the people that have been treated poorly, our job is to treat people properly, respectfully, like they're children of God, because that's who they are. 1 John 3 1. We treat people with dignity and respect, we treat ourselves with dignity and respect. We're not quite figured it out. We haven't quite gotten revealed to the place. But we're continuing. Every day that we walk with Jesus, we're seeing more and more and more of Jesus. I pray today that I would see people with Jesus' eyes, not with my eyes. (laughs) That I would see this, this world in a way that is so powerful and strong. Zergan Moltmann wrote this idea that we must live Resurrection, live salvation, live in heaven in reverse. We think about heaven of no more tears and pain and suffering. That kindness and goodness is flowing. You're the lavishly loved child of God. May we demonstrate that 
with everything we have, everything we do, and everything we say. Before we move into communion at our kitchen table this Tuesday, there were two quotes that I had to pause and, and write down. One was, was Betty Janice, and Betty said, we must live out our life, our daily life, in such a way that we're at peace every night when we say good night, Lord. What a great night. Knowledge. And then Pat Paris said, my past is forgiven, my future is in eternity, today I'm going to live for God. My prayer would be for each one of us to lavishly know that you are adored by a Savior. And that that would be the way that you would treat this whole world, that you would see the whole world through that lens. May it be true in us so that we can live this out and demonstrate this to the world. Amen. As we get an opportunity to come to this table, what a joy it is. Uh, Join me now as we pray together. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart, that we have failed to be an obedient church, that we have not done your will, that we have broken your law, we have rebelled against your love, we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You know, it is right, it's a good, it's a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty. You're the creator of heaven and earth. And so with the company of heaven and all of, of, of this incredible company of yours, O oh God, We praise your name and we join this unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. It was by the baptism of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection that you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from from slavery, sin, and death, and you gave us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. The night in which Jesus gave himself for us, he took the bread, and he gave thanks to God, and he broke the bread. He said, come, take and eat. This is my body that's been broken for you. 
And as often as you eat from this, remember me. After the meal was over, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks to God. And he gave it to all of his disciples. Don't choose the darkness. Don't, don't, don't choose wickedness. I've come in to give you a new covenant. A covenant of forgiveness of sins. A covenant to know that you're lavishly loved. And as often as you drink this, remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Oh, Holy Spirit, pour out yourself on us that are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry until you return in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet. It's through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your church, all honor, all power, all glory, it's yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Those that are assisting, if you would come, and all are welcome to this table.
uh, as we get opportunities this week to begin our, our walk into our normal everyday life, my hope is that we know that we, we're not trapped anymore in darkness because of Jesus Christ. Right? We're, we're not. When we think of, of our loved ones that are, have gone before that great cloud of witness, may we begin to start living as if we're in heaven now. May we begin that, that type of a love. May we choose that type of a love. May we walk in that type of a love. And may we demonstrate who we are because of the great love of Jesus for all people. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.